Hi beautiful beings, welcome back for another video. I'm going to be doing COVID-19 cover up part 5 and in this video I'm going to be talking about the agenda that's currently operating on planet earth right now and what exactly we have to do within our own self as a creator of this entire experience to start deconstructing, dissembling and um, really depowering what is currently operating on planet earth. I really want to talk about the fuel and the battery that they are using to harvest our life force. And, um, and as I've said in so many of my other videos, it's really important that we all are not seeing ourselves as victims or powerless during these times because, you know, there's this very easy and comfortable narrative that we can opt into, which is there is some kind of savior or some kind of being or political party or something outside of us that's here to do the work for us. But this isn't true. You know, on if you could really experience yourself on the higher level and even on this 3D level, because you're pulling this divine, powerful spiritual energy into this mind body system. But on a higher level, you are literally a god. You are so unbelievably powerful. And I said this in one of my Facebook posts the other day. Um, I was talking about, you know, it can look this system and this agenda, the cabal, the deep state. It's called the deep state because it goes so deep. It's like rooted into everything that's operating on planet Earth right now. And when you're looking through these, you're, when you're experiencing through the senses and you're looking out into the world and you're seeing how all pervasive it is, you can feel as though it's incredibly powerful and that it really does own us and enslave us in some way. But when you really start to understand yourself beyond your physical form and you understand the energetics of what you are, and I'm not going to say who, I'll say what, because you're not a who, you're not just a... Um, personality coming through this mind body system you are a what you are a energy field that is all encompassing and incredibly powerful so when you really start to understand what you are you start to realize hey i chose to incarnate at, at this time and come down here at this time because i am an active participant and co-creator in the experience of creating the new earth and assembling the old earth so no more is it opting into this narrative of like you know someone's outside of us that's going to save us and in saying that i really want to you know before i dive into everything else that i want to share in this video which is a lot um, I really want to share that it's really important that we are all owning our, all, our own role in what's happening right now and what's showing up because it, I can see a lot of shaming is going on with different perspectives of, you know, the conspiracy, the anti-conspiracy theorists shaming the people who are metabolizing the dark information and sharing that on their social media channels. But then there's also the, the awakened beings who are sharing that are shaming the people who are still asleep. Like if we can really just take a higher perspective and see that every soul is going to play their unique role in this process, whether that is, you know, um, you know, a monk that's just like meditating and all the beings that are focusing on love and light or the beings who are going deep down into the deep state cabal information and processing, metabolizing all the information about the blood sacrifice and ritual and all of these things. It's like whatever role you're feeling intuitively guided towards, just know that you play the most perfect role for the planet's evolution and for our species evolution and really, really see if you can <clears throat> rather than shame anyone who's taking a slightly different role than you just see that we are all playing like we all hold a piece of the puzzle and it all comes together in the most perfect way so really just owning our position and not shaming anyone for their disposition on any matter um, that feels really important so we're going to be talking about the agenda we're going to be talking a lot about fear um, and I'm going to be giving a technique that I've been using within my own life the last probably three to four years now to dissolve all fear patterns and programs and energies within my system. And this has really led me to completely upgrade and up level my life. Like my life is so vastly different to what it used to be. I used to live with so much fear because remember that like fear isn't an emotion. It is an energy. It is literally something that is like like an illusory fleeting experience that's moving through the system and your internal state of vibratory resonance that is deeply connected to your higher self is letting you know what's true and what's not. 
So when you're in fear, you're in contraction, it feels really dense, you feel really suffocated. You can tell that you've slightly vibrated out of resonance with how source, spirit and your higher self sees life and reality. So fear truly is just false evidence appearing real that's shifting through. It's an energy and this agenda that's operating on planet Earth right now feeds on fear. You know, fear is literally the battery pack that keeps this whole thing going. It is literally the fuel. And as soon as we also start learning how to uh, alchemize our fears and let them go, allow them to dissolve back into the white light of what we truly are, then the entire planet starts to change so drastically, you know, like without us even having to go out and do much, not saying that inspired action is not necessary because it is, but without us having to go do, do, do and work with, you know, the 3D realm, all of this material matter, if we are all doing the inner work of alchemizing our own fears back into love, then that alone is going to completely dissolve, dissemble, and um, the whole system that's operating on the earth right now, you know, this darker agenda that truly is uh, enslaving humanity, you know, that will just completely start to dissolve. And the planet, as we know, it will completely start to shift. And I saw this, you know, a few days ago, several days ago now, I I sat with the sacred mushroom teacher plant and went so deep, so deep. And it was profound and overwhelming at times to see how much our planet is going to change during our lifetime, not during our children or our grandchildren, that too, but during our lifetime, things are starting to speed up and they're not going to stop speeding up from here. We're all feeling it since the pandemic COVID-19 stuff came into place. We've all felt things are speeding up, manifestation speeding up, you know, um, these waves of energy are speeding up. The global awakening is speeding up and it's not going to slow down from here on out, which means what we are going to witness take place in our lifetime like shivers all over my body. It's like, it's huge. It's monumental. And it's really important that we are all seeing that and seeing that our role in this is as important as anyone else's. So let's talk a little bit about fear before I go into this technique, this tool that I'm going to give you that I want every single one of you to start practicing today and literally keep on practicing this. Do it all day, every day, if you have to, for the next two weeks, two months, and just start to look at how quickly your life starts to change. It's literally revolutionary and it has supported me so much. And I've always, I've touched on it in all of my videos, but I've never given this step-by-step -step process. So I'm really excited to give you that. Um, but before we dive into that, I just want to talk about this battery pack of fear that this, this energy, and you know, I saw this on the journey with the, the mushrooms as well. I really was taken back to the center of the universe and taken back. It felt like a few thousand years ago to when it almost felt like this mutation happened from this natural thread of organic life force, Gaia, our universe. It's very feminine. It is, um, it is the bringer of life. It is literally just life force. And every single one of us has this residing within our body. And it's what keeps us healthy, happy, and balanced within. Although when we start to disconnect from this life force, we start to opt into what this other energy mutation is, what it looked like, you know, and many, Depending on what um, density of light that you want to be playing in, there's a lot of videos, a lot of spiritual teachers out there talking about uh, reptilians and draconians and all of that thing. That's fine. You can refer to this, this agenda and this, um, this energy that's operating on planet Earth as that type of thing, because in some ways, yes, it is. Um, but again, if we move up the, the realms of light and how light wants to play and express itself, we move closer, we move further and further away from form and even away from energy and we move up into pure nothingness and at that very top level at the very top level the 12th density dimension we can say it's all one so then this is why i'm constantly saying in my videos stop giving this thing so much power stop fueling it by putting it outside of yourself and saying that it's this like 
you know, foreign ET race. It's super dark, super satanic, and it's here to harvest us. You know, it's like, it's such a subtle form of just giving away our power as opposed to really taking the higher perspective and seeing that it's all you just playing and expressing in a different way. But we as a soul, as a more individuated part of the creator have come down into these lower density, more compressed realms of consciousness to in some ways fight this fight of love or fear, you know, to stand up in the name of love and to get all of the soul lessons. And ultimately it doesn't matter what ends up happening, but we are all just here to play and experience. And when we do pass over and we go back, to the creator when we go home we realize that it wasn't as serious as our mind and our humans made it out to be and that it really all just was play it was a video game it was a test of sorts to grow and evolve so coming back um so this agenda this this foreign energy to it's foreign to gaia you know it's foreign to this universal feminine wisdom that we are all born and bred from um, and it is not pro-life at all and Bill Gates is certainly part of that agenda Bill Gates and numerous other peoples um, are definitely not pro-life and this is what this energy is when in my when I was in my journey I could see this thread of life and I could see a forest full of trees that had been burnt to ash and it was very dark and scary and I was like it's it's gone it's burnt um, but then you'd see and then I'd see this little like bright green shrubbery just poke out of the tree and the symbolic nature of that vision was life is always rebirthing she's always coming through even when we think the most horrific awful things will happen she this thread of organic life force will come through and birth a new way you know even if our civilization ceased to exist even if we drove ourselves into the ground using all of these technological advancements and we you know self um we became self-extinct even that is okay because a new thread of life force and energy would come through, you know? So there really is nothing to be afraid of, but it isn't pro-life. And the way in which this agenda keeps us um, in this mode of being harvested in many ways is through fear and separation. So fear is huge and we all feel it, you know, the media, the news, it's literally a slow IV drip of poison moving its way into the mind body energy system and when you become incredibly energetic energetically sensitive you actually cannot even be in the same room as a radio or a tv that's on the news because you hear it and you can see through all of the deep indoctrination and programming that's coming through it and you can literally feel that energy enter your body and the energy field as it enters the body what it aims to do is it aims to make you feel as though you're powerless and helpless and that you need an outer authority to save you or to keep you safe you know that really is the agenda of continuing to keep all of the car crashes the rape the you know um the plane crash you know whatever it is the war painted all over the media very low frequency it's literally designed to make us feel like something bad's about to happen to us because as long as we're in the state of consciousness that something bad is about to happen to us we are literally putty we are literally goo in their hand we are so moldable we are just we hand over the keys to all of our power and then separation is also very important to mention because separation is a huge part of the agenda of COVID-19 and perhaps the second wave of quarantine that could be on its way later this year. Because as long as we continue to be separated, it weakens the field of resonance. And we all see this, the Schumann resonance after the global meditation in April. We should be continuing to do these because it spiked. It went bright white light because so many souls came together with the same intention and um, bright white light. And it hasn't been the same ever since. The Schumann resonance has been like moving up the frequency scale ever since. So this is exactly what the agenda does not want. And so in many ways, we can see that they are very much so losing. And I would go as far to say they have already lost. Just as beautiful Sasha mentioned when we did the interview recently, 
the game is over, the war is over. Right now we're just like cleaning up all of the little fires, but in terms of the way the energy scales have tipped, it's already tipped in our favor, but they're not gonna go out without a scream. They're not gonna go out without a bang. And that's where we see a lot of the desperation coming through with the inflation of numbers, the deception, the second round of quarantine. China's already, part of China has already gone back into their second round of quarantine. You know, they're really, really getting quite desperate and they're putting in all the stops, which is actually serving the light agenda because it means even the unconscious, more sleepy souls who are not so much in a contract to wake up and to share and to really become a light worker in this life, but even those beings are getting pissed off. They're getting annoyed and irritated because of all the BS that's taking place. Um, and so, you know, it's like it's it's like all of this dark stuff is actually backfiring in so many ways and it's actually serving the light agenda. So I want to really speak into who and what you truly are, and I'm going to keep this in a quite scientific, biological sense. I've been working with the human body for the last six years um, very, very deeply, um, and I've also been working so much with the human mind and seeing what happens when we start to point our focus and our awareness in a certain way, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later, and what actually happens when we do that. And, you know, this is the work of Bruce Lipton and Joe Dispenza, when we single point our focus focus in a certain way what is actually possible you know infinity anything is possible when we utilize this mind body spirit system this trinity and this is the truth is the people i'm not going to call them people the energies operating this darker agenda they know they know what we are as this holy trinity we are alchemists we are alchemists, which is why I'm going to be giving you a technique on how to alchemize fear. So this is the reason why they want to keep us locked into fear and separation. And they also want to, I'm going to go into other two other points in a moment. I'm sorry, I have a lot to share. It's just going to like vomit out right now. They also want to stop us from feeling and they want to stop us from feeling our life force in the areas where it's actually generated. And instead, all of these marketing ploys pull us out into an external experience, make us grasping for something outside because forever we'll be grasping for a, a fake sense of life force, crystallized, Christed light energy that's outside of us rather that's, that's inside. So let's just focus on one thing at a time. So yes, they keep us blindfolded to our power. But when you really start to understand the mind body system, like I do, you see that, okay, let's take it from here. Every single little cell within your body, and you have trillions of them, you've got all of these little cells and every single little cell, when we really start to understand it, it is pure magnificence. It's pure intelligence, but beyond the cell, there's something even more important. There is something called mitochondria, which are we we have around 200 mitochondria, little organisms that surround each cell. And so the mitochondria is passed through the feminine biology. It comes through the mother, which is the microcosm of our universe and the mother womb, you know, something that's up in the higher cosmic realms. But this mitochondria, it's all to do with chemical energy. It's to do with how can the cell process everything that's coming in and alchemize this into energy for the body. You know, that's what nutrients and food does. And that's why so many, not so many, but a good handful of beings on planet Earth right now are actually breatharian, which is where you consume no food at all because they've actually mastered bringing in chemical energy and accessing their pranic life force through unconditional love. Um, they've mastered bringing that in and that's feeding the mitochondria and the cells without actually needing to take in nutrient and life force through food. So this chemical energy is what we can call light energy and it really is at the core of what you are. And what we have discovered is that one cubic centimeter of this mitochondria um, within the biology of a human has 10,000 times more power than one cubic centimeter of the sun. So this is why so many metaphysicists, 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 me, screw it. Um, this is why so many of them speak to you literally being a star, 
that is what you are. You are literally so deeply connected to the sun and in many ways more powerful. So we can actually see when we start to actually really dive into this, that the agenda, they're screwed. The, the beings running the agenda, the agenda are screwed because as soon as we all work out what we truly are, done, game over, just like that. But the way in which they keep it going is keeping us in forgetfulness and amnesia, which is easy because we all do technically have amnesia when we come to this more compressed, lower density realm. We've traveled so far away from the light by design because we want to forget who we were completely and come here and be fully identified with the main character of our own movie. Um, and that's really what helps us to grow and evolve as a soul. So we chose to do that. And so the agenda is very much so keeping people asleep and disconnected from what they truly are. But the second that we take off those blindfolds and we remember, game over, just like that. So the two other things I mentioned earlier that I want to speak into before we dive into the technique is two things that are very much so programmed in and indoctrinated into us by society, remembering that if we look up at the hierarchy, we see it's all just coming down. So we see that it's these energetic beings, as I said in my mushroom journey, I saw it was like a mutation from Gaia. It was like a corruption in the system. The energy became retard and it split and it is no longer progressive <clears throat> in the realms of life force and creation. Instead, it is, um, I wouldn't say that it's regressive. It's not that it's going backwards, but it's like a very stagnant energy. It's incredibly stagnant, which is why we feel so awful in um, sometimes even in lockdown or quarantine or any time in life where we feel like we're not we're not evolving, we're not progressing, we're not moving forward, not just so in like a productive doing energy, but like within going into ourselves and really feeling ourselves and evolving and following this path of evolution, that is really the realms of hell. So moving back to this hierarchy, it's this energetic, these energetic forces, and then that comes through certain families, certain beings who incarnated a long time ago, and then they really set up the whole system on planet Earth. And we can call those families, you know, it's very much so to do with the Roth, Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and the Morgans and the people that owned and operated all the centralized banking systems, but it also came through the Roman Empire, the Vatican. And we can just call this larger um, breadth of people, of energies coming through people, the Illuminati. So it's the energetic forces, it's the Illuminati, and then it starts coming down through, you know, the government, the corporations, and then it comes through the civilized, the civilians. But let's divide the civilians into two different groups of people, because this is a really important perspective for what is to come in building this new earth. And who are the beings that are really going to be making an impact in the future? It's the children. It is our job to be doing the purification on ourselves right now and cleaning up what we can so that the next few generations of beings that come in are going to literally be like the next level game changers so that the world as we know it will completely cease to exist. So we can divide the civilians into parents and into children. And at some point, at least most of us will play both of those roles. Unless you have children, then you really were just, no, but many ways we're all parents to one another. We're all teachers to one another. So it's really important that we see that the parents are just passing down this crap generation to generation and we're all inheriting it. And these two things are, first of all, we are not a feeling species. We have dropped so far out of our feeling body and we are operating so much in the head. And so, you know, we do this through the societal programs of making people wrong when they're sad or depressed or expressing emotion in some way. You know, like when someone starts to express really strong emotion, most beings in that space are going to be deeply triggered unless they've really met themselves and their own emotions. They're going to be deeply triggered by that emotion because of the way that we've been programmed to completely turn away from our feeling body. So this is very much so to do with the technique around alchemizing your fears and dissolving your fears. I'm going to be giving at the end of the video because fear is something that we feel and we're afraid of and we just don't want to touch it. We turn away from it. 
But if we really just saw fear as something that's popping up in the field of our consciousness for us to alchemize and look at completely so that that fear can be transmuted into one of our biggest strengths, then we would literally be walking the path of, you know, just being these creative beings. We would be linking up and syncing with our greater being, our higher self, our oversoul. And we would just be like pure alchemists on planet earth, just like wizards and witches, just, you know, and there's a lot of dogma and stigma around those words too, I know, but it's like the only thing magic is alchemization. It's turning from one thing into another and it's using the magic that is contained within you, your light to transform anything that's of a lower frequency, dense energy back into something that's of a higher frequency that's serving you, our planet and humanity. So we really need to start seeing that feeling and spending time with ourselves in our feeling body and no longer turning away from what feels uncomfortable and instead, instead turning towards and really facing and spending time in that space, then that alone is going to create so many different energetic ripples on the planet. You have no idea. And then the second thing I want to mention uh, is that we are literally being trained um, and brainwashed into believing that our life force resides outside of us. And, you know, the spiritual community have fallen into this more than anyone. And in many ways, I can see new age spirituality in the false light matrix, which is where you are literally just projecting and sending all of your light and life force onto something else, whether that's a God, a teacher, a guru, whatever it is, you know, this is false light matrix. And there is a time and a place for this because I feel that this new age spirituality movement in many ways is just a stepping stone, you know, because when you go from being completely offline disconnected and unconscious being it's very hard to go from that into self-realization the direct path and it's much more fun to play around in chakra balancing and you know and all of these other different things that are very just part of that new age spirituality movement that are much more just like a distraction of anything so there definitely is a time and a place for that but what we can see especially in these spiritual communities but really everywhere with marketing and you need this and you need that new car you need that new dress you need all of these things outside of you that's going to bring you happiness what is happiness it's literally just this life force energy coming through and allowing all of your cells to dance with joy that really is the frequency of happiness and then in the spiritual movement it's making you feel as though there is something outside of you that deserves your your um your awareness to worship you know you're literally just sending it outside so fake life force energy is hedonistic pleasure. It's something that resides outside that gives you like instant gratification of feeling good, but it always, it never lasts as opposed to the opposite, which I don't know what the word is, eudonistic. I'm not too sure exactly what the word is, but it's, it's um, self-sourced pleasure and gratification. And it usually, it, it's not going to be instant gratification. You know, it's things like meditating, it's breathing, it's taking yourself on a long walk. You know, it's not found in social media, scrolling, food, makeup, clothes, looking pretty, getting attention from men or from women. You know, that's, then that's the way society is set up. It's the constant grasping, the constant grasping on something and poof, it disappears and it's empty and meaningless. And it doesn't really provide you with any kind of sense of meaning that actually lasts. So it's really important that we all just remain aware of this, um, this distortion that is literally installed into us from being very young children, which is turning away from our feeling body and turning away from what feels uncomfortable rather than leaning in, turning towards and facing it fully. And then also chasing things that have this promised life force residing within it and it's outside of you. Um, and instead of just seeing that the quality of your awareness and and the presence, the state of presence that you are cultivating inside of you, not only in meditation, but in every moment, every conversation with someone, even when you're writing a comment on social media or posting something, making a cup of tea or walking around your house, the quality of your awareness in every single moment is really what generates this light energy that is beaming from inside of you. And when we all start feeling these things, when we start feeling our emotions and we start 
feeling this light energy inside of us. And no longer are we just in this rat race of the mind, you know, and it takes a very honest person to admit we're all there in some way or another. Like I witness my own mind. I have a very good idea of what's going on in the collective mind. We're all there in some way. And if we can just stop pretending um, and just get really honest and say like, wow, I'm so in the mind today and not judge ourselves for that experience, but instead see that we can drop out of that and we can drop back into the body and really ground down and really feel a heightened, high quality, pure crystalline awareness that's coming through us. Well, then if every being was doing that work alone, the whole like scales and everything that's shifting around the energetic scales that's kind of going like this right now, it would just be completely tipped in our favor and the light energy would just completely take over. And um, in that sense, then it just becomes a non-frequency match, like a, a dissonance, like a lack of resonance for certain experiences to be playing out on planet Earth that currently are. It would just be like no longer in resonance and it would literally just be asked to leave energetically because there isn't that uh, there's not an opening for it anymore. No longer is there a collective agreement that that is a relevant experience for us to be experiencing on this planet. So let's dive into this tool that I've been using for several years now. Uh, this is based upon a book that's called Busting Loose from the Money Game. Um, Busting Loose from the Money Game is a funny, it's, it's, that book is about money, but really it's more about energy and self-realization. And that's really what I'm going to be teaching here. This is becoming the alchemist, entering the kitchen and becoming the alchemist of your own gold. Realizing that every single thing that you are terribly afraid of is literally gold. So rather than running away from what you're afraid of, and let's name it right now, like really get clear on what that thing is that just kind of is always at the center of your experience. And it's like, oh, you know, and maybe it's not always there, but it's like fear of flying or fear of getting old, fear of dying, fear of um, having a miscarriage, fear of your children getting sick, fear of your hair falling out, fear of not being loved, fear of being made fun of, fear of being judged. You know, like we all have a set of things that just feels terrifying. And these fears are definitely indoctrinated and installed into us through a corrupt society that has been operating for thousands of years, but they're also carried with us through the seed of our soul because our soul is not physical, it is energetic. So just because your body will cease to exist at the end of this life, it does not mean that you will not carry those codes and that energy and that information um, into your next life. So for instance, if you were killed in a certain way or you know your partner, something really terrible happened with your partner or just something very gruesome or traumatic happened in this life, you will, unless it was resolved in that lifetime, carry the codes and the imprints of that memory into this life. So these are the ways in which fears start to develop. Um, and as I've mentioned in a lot of my videos, a big one, a core one is the fear of self-expression because so many of us have been killed or tortured or terrible things have happened to us in a past life because we expressed our truth and all of our community turned against us and something bad happened, which is why so many beings right now, like bless all of you who are sharing your voice and bless every single one of you who don't feel ready, honor that space, honor your time. Remember that you don't have to force yourself into anything. We have to keep following what feels natural and, and relevant for our soul's blueprint. And fear is very, it's an interesting thing to work with. And you can see that it's so deep, but we have the power to alchemize it. We have the power to let it go. So even things that you've been carrying since 25 lifetimes ago, you can let go and drop in this lifetime. And I've done a lot of this work on myself, things that I used to be terrified of, I don't even flinch to anymore. It's so hard to even relate to that fear. I'm like, what? why was I so afraid of that? And that's because I've done all of this alchemization work. So we can see that fear is just an energy. It's an energy within the system and every single energy within the system can be alchemized, which means to transmute. It means to use the power of your focused awareness to go in and to actually disrupt that corruption in the energy and allow your life force to come through and to purify it. So rather than us just leaving all of our fears unattended to and letting them like build up, as Michael Singer says in, um, I can't remember, not The Surrender Experiment, but his other beautiful book, um, he talks about uh, 
the fact that we carry all of these thorns within us. We carry these thorns and we let them build up and we say, ouch, don't touch that thorn. And it's like all of these fears, these little tender bits within us, rather than just becoming the alchemist and say, I don't want to live with that anymore. I don't have to live with that. Okay, so what? My boyfriend cheated on me. Okay, my parent died or my brother, my sibling died or you know, some kind of trauma was in the system and it's been causing some kind of havoc within your life. I don't have to live with that anymore. Am I ready to let that go? So get clear on that question and then start doing this. So a fear comes up in your life. This is step number one. And it may not be a fear. It may be a contraction. It may be you're holding on to a stagnant energy. It's anything that's lower frequency and you feel it in the system because it's not of resonance with love. You're not feeling in love. You're not feeling gratitude. You're not feeling joy. You're feeling a contraction and it's going to live somewhere in the body. So prior to step number one, you could locate that thing within the body because as soon as you locate it within the body, you're really getting in touch with that energy and you're locking into it. And then you would move into step number one, which is expand the energy. Do not turn away from it, completely turn towards it. Imagine that this energy is a tornado that's going round and round. It's intense. Every single bit of your ego is saying, no, we do not have to do this. Just go make some nice food. You know, just go on social media, go talk to someone, go meditate. You know, it'll disguise itself in a thousand ways as to why you have to distract yourself from just turning within and completely just feeling this thing. So you want to expand the energy as much as you possibly can. Imagine that the tornado is going and if you can walk into the center of it. So you're going to start feeling this energy, this contraction, this fear, this density. It's going to start expanding. Some days it's going to be more subtle. Other days you're going to feel like you are literally standing in the midst of a tornado shit has hit the fan. It is terrifying. It is so all encompassing. Perfect. That is exactly where you want to be. We are not growing the fears with our mind. We are not using the mind to go, but I'm so afraid. I'm so upset. I'm such a victim. Whatever the story is, this is completely out of the mind. This work that I'm describing has nothing to do with the mind. This is complete embodiment. This is energetic. So do not allow the mind to take you down any little, you know, go around and merry go around and go down this little path or this or that. That's all a distraction. It's the ego trying to distract you from the true work that needs to happen. So you're feeling you're expanding and you're waiting to get to that center point in which the energy has become so intense. You feel you're at what we can call the peak of the energy. So in that moment, when you get to the peak, what happens next is you are going to affirm the truth. You are going to write up a list of mantras, maybe one, maybe two, maybe five. You're going to have a list of mantras that you are going to apply and utilize in that moment where the energy has become so um, intense and amplified. And so the mantras are going to be anything that resonates with the core of your soul, but it could be anything like this. I am the power and presence of God. I am all that there is. There is nothing outside of me that can hurt me. I am an infinite energy field. I am the source of everything. You know, you can see the mantras are very much so affirming what you truly are. And that's going to be different. Different words and linguistics are going to resonate for each different soul and like the journey they're currently on. Maybe mine aren't going to resonate for you, um, but it could be like, I am an eternal soul. I cannot die. I will not get sick. I cannot be harmed. The dark agenda is going down. It's like whatever something, and maybe you're like feeling something as I say those, or maybe you have to go on a path of self-discovery to discover what feels most resonant. But these sentences that you write down to remember for whenever you're doing this process, they should really move you, like almost stand hairs up on your body and it should literally feel like, whoa. It may not feel intense if you're not really energetically sensitive, but generally speaking, when you say this sentence, you should feel a shift in which no longer are you feeling like as afraid or contracted. It almost brings like a little opening, like a little release is what you should feel. And then when you start to become more energetically sensitive, you may have like a kundalini, like um, energy moving through your body. You may see white light. You may feel like a huge release. You may all of a sudden feel like crying tears of joy. Like the energy releases will come more and more intense depending on your level of energetic sensitivity. But generally speaking, you're going to have a release because this 
this thing that you've been holding on to that's super dense and contracted and low frequency, it's having an avenue to actually leave your body. And that's naturally going to feel really good. And it's going to feel really expansive. So once you've reaffirmed to yourself the truth and you've gotten into alignment with this fear is not real, this is the truth. Then what you are going to do is you're going through going to go through a process in which you energetically call back all of your power and you allow non-me energy to leave your field because we're all hanging on to a lot of non-me energy and it's all me technically, but non-me energy is referring to anything that's dense or dark um, that you're hanging on to that you've picked up in your electromagnetic field, but it's not actually of the frequency of your soul and your higher self. It's not yours. It could be your parents. It could just be societies. It could be the guy on the train. Um, it could be someone that you were arguing with on social media. Like it could just be any kind of gunk that you've picked up. So the next step, this is step number three, after you've reaffirmed the truth, what you are doing now is you are saying, I call back all of my energy right now. I feel it all coming back to me. I feel it rushing through me. And you're just imagining your energy field being purified. You're imagining a lot of your energy, your source energy coming back, your life force awakening. And then you will, if you feel called to ask any non-me energy to leave. I command any and all non-me energy to leave my field now. I feel my mind, body, and soul integrating this information. This is now complete. So really all you're doing, this is logo synthesis. So this is command ask. Um, so this is literally commanding your energy to come back and commanding non me energy to leave, you know, like, cause we are bloody powerful beings, everyone. And when we really start to understand that, and we understand that we are the alchemist, we literally come in and we work with the energy within us. We don't need to go do Reiki. We don't need to go do sound healing, even though those are beautiful experiences that are going to be relevant for many. And don't get me wrong. I love to do that from time to time as well, but constantly searching for a healer, a therapist, a guru, a God outside of you is literally turning away from what you are because it's all you. It is up to you. This energy alchemization is right here, right now at your fingertips. You don't need anything. You don't need to pay for anything. There is no excuse to be avoiding this work. So once you've called back your energy and you have um, asked energy to leave, you're literally just going to sit there for a while and you're just going to allow the work to happen. And so energetic, this is the way energetic work um, works out is that it can happen instantaneously and it can be a really big shift or it can be a really gradual thing. And actually a lot of work happens that night when you go to sleep. A lot of non-physical beings who call, were called in during your very powerful commands, you know, because as you do that so many beings hear you. Um, so they're actually all working on you as well as your guides and, you know, your oversoul and all of these non-physical energies, they work on you as you sleep and you'll really feel that it's such a beautiful experience. After I've done a really big healing session on myself, I'll go to sleep and like my dreams are really beautiful and fluffy. And then I wake up in the morning and I'm like, whew, that was intense. Like, I feel like I was just in like a really intense therapy session, all of that sleep. So they're really working on you in your sleep, but also just the several hours after you've done energy work on yourself in this way. So it's not that you have to have a huge shift in the moment, but generally speaking, some kind of sense of relief should have arrived. And if it didn't, you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to do it again. And we're all kind of in limbo right now with our lives. So why wouldn't we be spending time just energetically working on ourselves? Because not only is this going to start draining all of your fears, it's going to start reactivating your life force, which is going to heal your body, clean your mind, clear your electromagnetic field, clean your consciousness. It's literally just doing what plant medicines and deep meditation does. It's clearing the field. So what happens when you start to do this and you really do it? And what you do is you drain that entire fear. You drain all of the energy out of that fear whatever okay so whatever we fear the most usually does show up in our reality somehow so say for instance you're so afraid of being judged you're so afraid of being ridiculed by a group of people you know because you were traumatized at school for being bullied 
If you're holding on to that fear and you never do something about it, you're going to see that same pattern of energy show up literally like all throughout your life. Um, or say perhaps your dad cheated on your mom and you're so afraid of the man leaving, then it's very likely if you've got that fear, you're going to enter relationships in which they do that. So that's why we don't want to hold on to fear because fear just lives in the energy field. It lives in the subconscious mind and it unconsciously manifests your reality. Um, It unconsciously paints on the blank canvas of your consciousness and your reality. So what happens when we don't leave our fears unattended to and instead we turn towards them and we fear and we face all of it and we alchemize it is that that fear drains. And step number one is I'm not afraid of that anymore. I was once afraid of, um, you know, like flying around the world or traveling on my own or I was afraid of like catching the subway or, you know, I was afraid of going really deep into detox or I was afraid of my hair falling out or all of these things that I was once just really afraid of. It's like, I'm just not afraid of that anymore. That's so weird. It's just gone. And then when that step has happened, you'll notice that that thing no longer shows up in your reality because no longer is it like a challenge or an obstacle for your soul to face and alchemize and transmute. It's like not a relevant experience for your soul. But as long as something remains in the energy realm of being a fear, then it's still within that realm of like something that needs to be transmuted into a strength or, you know, alchemized back into love. And that's really the entire journey of what we're here to do, you know, on this, on this beautiful, in this beautiful earthly realm, we've traveled down here to simply overcome challenges and obstacles, unravel karma and all of this karmic imprinting with other souls and with ourself and our reality. It's literally just the, the realm of transmutation. That's really what we're here for. So when we start to take off the blinders and we realize how truly powerful we are and we know that coming back to stillness and coming back to ourself is really where we're going to find all of this powerful information that's going to drive us forward on our path and we stop this incessant constant search outside of our own self, then life is going to become very sweet, very, very beautiful and harmonious and, you know, I... I've shared a lot about my lifestyle and I'll share a lot more, not because I care to brag to my brothers and sisters, but I care to show you what you're capable of. And life can be very beautiful and you can be incredibly abundant with love, friends, money, gifts from other people, gifts from the universe, synchronicities and weird coincidences that happen that just make you go, wow, I'm so seen. I'm so loved. I'm so supported. I'm just like, there's something traveling with me and I feel it here and it's so beautiful. Um, Yeah, and I think that we just all so deserve that life and we can all have it, but we have to choose it for ourselves. So start applying this technique to your life. I have moved through months of my life where I do nothing but this pretty much all day, like literally like six hours a day. I'm like, okay, there's another one. Go in and do the process again and again. I'm just doing it over and over again and it works. It really does, but you have to stick with it. You have to be consistent and it really will start to change your life in the most magnificent ways. Okay, I love you and I'll speak to you soon.